Hello, Sheriff. This is Jack Rosen. Hey, how you President doing, Jack? Congress. Uh, good to meet you. Uh, nice have, to meet uh, you all. We have a number, of, too big a group to, to name everybody, but let me at least uh, name a couple of the board members. We mm -hmm. have Jerry Hauser, Munir Kazmir, Michael Melnick, two staff people, Akri is here, Ron Jacobson, I don't know if Jeffrey's here. And so uh, we want to first uh, thank you for getting on. I'm sure it's a busy time for you as it is for all law enforcement. Uh -huh. You know, the American Jewish Congress has been engaged uh, of late in domestic uh, violence that we, we all you know, are running into. Anti-Semitism, all kinds of law enforcement problems. And as being the sheriff of one of the largest Jewish communities in the country, we thought it'd be interesting to hear your viewpoint. What is going on with regard to violence, especially with regard to anti-Semitism? What are you doing about it? And in particular, uh, we think that added monitoring would make a significant difference of some of these domestic terrorists. Um, you can't just sneak into the country, buy a gun, and and hold a few Jews hostage in a synagogue. Somebody should have caught you. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been proponents of uh, you know naming some domestic terrorists as, as you know in the same category as foreign terrorists when they have a connection to foreign terrorists, because we keep hearing from law enforcement they don't necessarily have the tools to go after these domestic terrorists. So I don't want to talk long. I know your time is short, so I'm going to hand it over to you, and then there'll be some questions. But thank you so much for getting on, Chair. No, you got it. Uh, thank you for uh, reaching out. And uh, I can tell you this. We have several things that are going on at the same time. You know, how rare, right? We definitely have an increase of violent crime. I have a one-year change from last year to this year. Violent crime is up 11.89% uh, for all the county areas. And that's a significant jump. Good news is homicide is down 37% from last year's record year. But if you look at the overall trend, it's still way too high. I mean, there's no high point. Every, every crime is a tragedy. Every homicide is a tragedy. But just looking at the big numbers, it's kind of leveled off that steep climb from the last two years. So one bright spot in the thing. But overall, crime is up. And unfortunately, now that we're getting out of the pandemic, some of the traditional crime patterns are re-emerging. We're seeing a spike now in burglaries and robberies, things that have been suppressed when the pandemic and everybody at home and businesses closed. That really altered a lot of patterns. But now we're seeing, and this is especially a concern to the Jewish community, particularly in the West LA, Beverly Hills, that whole area in Hollywood, follow home robberies, smash and grab robberies. This affecting a lot of our residential areas, a lot of our business communities, and these are organized. These are all gang driven and mostly from uh, South LA is where most of the gangs are coming from. And uh, you've seen who the targets are. You saw Jackie Avant's murder. It's a prime example of Sandra Shells, a nurse at Union Station, Brianna Kupfer at the furniture store in Fairfax. And so there's a lot of bad things going on in that regard. Then when he goes, start focusing on hate crimes. We have a huge uptick in hate crimes in general against the API community, against the Jewish faith, against the Muslim faith, and pretty much any, um, any of the, the faiths that have been targeted by extremism here in LA in Southern California has been the Jewish, Muslim, and the Sikh community, those three in particular. Things that we're doing to combat it is one, we're pushing to increase a number of our reserve deputies as high as number as possible. My goal is to get up to a thousand because I want to have a good group of reserve deputies that can fan out over from Friday through Sunday and all the weekends and actually protect houses of worship, the ones that are targeted to uh, by religious uh, violence. That is, that is one goal right there. In terms of hate crimes and hate incidents, We've been solving a lot of these major hate crimes and making arrests on them, but we need to up the ante on people reporting hate incidents, which tend to be the precursors to the hate crime. That, um, 
We've been launching public awareness campaigns and telling people, even though you may think it's insignificant, you brush it off. If there's information there that's actionable, we can identify the players. They become the suspect down the road when we connect all the dots. There's people, people acting out of the norm. So that's something we can work together on and we're doing it in multiple languages as well. And uh, so those are the some things we're doing. I'm concerned at the state level, they're trying to defund our ability like our Joint Regional Intelligence Center. At the state level, they're trying to remove funding from our ability to uh, analyze and do risk assessments on terrorism threats at the state level. And that's driven by woke ideology that's kind of concerns me. And then I'm seeing it here now at the county level where they want to have the inspector general monitoring a federal, a joint federal, state, county, and city operation when he has no authority. So this is a little troubling development that's just come arisen uh, recently. So there's a lot of things going on, but um, we're making headways in terms of our strategies. Our big uh, challenge for my department is the defunding efforts of the Board of Supervisors. When I don't have 25% of my detective division, that's 25% less of people that actually connect the gods, figure out who's a bad guy, throw them in jail. Some things, that, but just the old fashioned stuff that needs to happen, our capacity is being uh, challenged right now. And uh, so hopefully we'll have a, a better board of supervisors uh, at the start of next year. Let's see what happens with these elections. But in a nutshell, that's what's going on right now. I have um, overall part one crime from last year to this year is up 7.58%. And um, that's uh, those are probably the biggest numbers to date that I can report. Are you still and having the anti-Semitic outbreaks that you had a few months back? It was some restaurants and things of that sort. We've had a few. They've been kind of like sporadic in between. I think most of the stuff has been directed towards the API community in particular. But when it comes to houses of faith, like you had the flyers, the anti-Semitic flyers, they they were distributed in the Beverly Hills was about two weeks ago. They came to light. So there, there's still people out there that are still harboring these, uh, these, uh, this animosity uh, towards uh, based on religion that's of concern. And um, that's that, that far right element that still is out there in the community that we have to deal with. Sheriff, I, uh, Jerry Howard here. Um, uh, I worked with Bill Bratton for 25 years. Uh, I was most recently, when Bill was PC in New York, I was the commissioner of Homeland Security for the state of New York, and I ran the counterterrorism center. Um, how much is intelligence playing a role in trying to prevent uh, these kinds of hate crimes? Uh, particularly anti-Semitism, I'm really troubled uh, that when you say, not about you, but when these people are trying to get rid of your um, uh, fusion centers or your counterterrorism centers, that's a real troubling move. But are, have you seen that to be productive in prevention? Oh, it's been incredibly productive in the prevention side of things. There's a lot of things that get averted, and that's through the the JRIC itself, our crime analysts, and you know the the whole campaign of if you see something, say something. We're getting a lot of information now, and we've done this massive investigations on on cryptocurrency and right. cyber crimes and frauds, and a lot of this stuff is driven through information we're getting through. Um, our intelligence gathering. And now that those investigations have gone global and we're working hand in hand with the FBI and we're dealing with a ring that's uh, uh, stealing in the billions of dollars on, on cryptocurrency stuff. So that is a, that is a threat on that side because a lot of that thing then is used, provides a, a funding source for extremist groups around the globe and financing right. of the coin. So yeah. the fact that the state of California is making a concerted effort to start to dismantle and not fund our capacity on the, on the JRIC side is, is concerning to me. 
they have antiquated um, system. We have LA Clear, you know, the different sure, uh, systems yeah. we use. Uh, they're literally pulling the plug on the software that keeps everybody safe from each other. So you don't have blue on blue violence when right. we're doing search warrants, for example. So there's an animosity that we're getting from the state, which uh, some of it is ideal. I think most of it is ideologically driven and well, uh, they frown upon troubling. it. Very, very troubling that yeah. they would want to pull the plug on that kind of intelligence. Uh, Jerry, let me uh, move on. Munir, do you have a question? Munir Kazmir, I understand you know the sheriff. Hi, Sheriff. Thank you for joining the call. Oh, there. How are you doing there, Munir? I'm okay. Thank God. Uh, what you believe represents the biggest anti Semitism threat right now? Is it far right extremes, violent from the radical? left or something else? I don't think you'll get it from the far left, the anarchist crowd, no. I think you always have the, the lone wolf operator always makes a, is a big threat. That's the person who's not gonna really make it to the radar, but they'll show up at a, at a synagogue. And uh, then you have a big tragedy and then we're trying to figure out could have been averted before. But when they're lone wolves, you know, those are the most difficult to detect because they're not communicating with anybody. They're just going to gather all their resources. They're going to do their intel. So having a good plan of defense to make sure you harden the target around your, your temples, your synagogues, so you're aware of who belongs in the community, who sticks out, that's the person who's doing the intel ahead of a planned attack. So that is one threat. But I think from a, just a sheer volume, the far right is probably the crowd that generates the biggest threat. Because if there was an actual cell here, organize it as external, like a um, like a one of these uh, groups from the Mid East, for example, that managed to recon reconstitute themselves here in LA County, they would be easier to detect just by virtue of communications and we can keep our eye on the chatter. It's the lone wolf one on that side, but on the other side, it's gonna be your, your far right elements that have this, uh, this grudge animosity towards the Jewish faith. And they'll attribute a lot of their shortcomings in life for why they did not succeed. And they'll blame it on, on, on uh, practitioners of the Jewish faith. So that, those are probably the two ones I'd be worried about. Far right and lone wolf people that are uh, radicalized. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, Michael Melnick, a, who, who is from L.A., I has known every sheriff there recently. I, I gather that you know each other. So, Michael, go ahead. Jeff, how are you? Uh, Very good. My father started in 1959. We came to Los Angeles. We started the Jewish community. My father was the leader of the Jewish community in Los Angeles until he passed away three years ago. Uh, we're talking about uh, synagogues. We have a lot of problems. My house is on Hudson, right after, right after June Street and Hudson in Hancock Park. And my father used to live, my sister lived there on, on, on Formosa between first and second. The problem is, for instance, Friday night or on the Sabbath, we still have attacks. People still curse and throwing things at us as, as, as we're speaking right now. It happened last week. We had that. Question is, to me, that's a incidental. It's, Anti-Semitism is there, you can't take it away. My question is the crime that's going on in LA, the illegals that came in, and if I'm not mistaken, that were released and doing your watch or whatever, if I'm not mistaken, they were released out of jail. My question is, my question, why they were released out of jail until they went back into courts? And a lot of crimes become from those illegals. Well, I, I can tell you this, when the, 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 the start of the pandemic, we started decompressing the jail population. We had it at 17,000. We slowly decreased it down to 12,000, but we didn't do it by re releasing the most dangerous people at all, actually quite the opposite. We released the elderly, those that were near the end of their sentence and on pretrial detention with the agreement with the district attorney's office and superior court. So the ones that got released in big waves that were, you could describe as dangerous, actually came from the state prison system. 
and they released you know tens of thousands of individuals from the state prison system and those are of concern because we saw a noticeable uptick in homelessness and homelessness now surrounding all of our houses of worship as well so you have an encroachment of two different things you have a homeless population with a high degree of mental illness and substance abuse and they're acting out on pretty much everybody and so we got to separate the two ones that are directed specifically rational people they're anti-semitic versus the homeless population with mental uh, illnesses that are just acting out on every institution around be it the tourist destinations our educational system our schools our temples mosques and all that so that uh two i think two different things right there but in terms of the undocumented on the homeless side they're about two percent they don't really add up to much because most people that come here undocumented and walk a thousand miles to get here they usually find a job and they're they're not homeless i'm concerned about our american-born ones are the ones that are driving their homeless count from all over the nation they come here to la to get all the free stuff the free dope or the cheapest dope and free housing or free food and they pitch a tent anywhere they want. And you're looking at it right now, go down any of the major thoroughfares on in Hollywood and you have to see, you don't have to go too far. So that, that's our, our biggest threat. When I, when I started the chaplaincy program for LAPD in 1990 and, 19, and 1973, they used to come at least twice a week, uh, twice a month, excuse me, to synagogue, to every synagogue, reform, conservative, uh, Orthodox and all the all, all the Jewish communities to speak individually to those communities is LA County Sheriff doing that at all? I don't know if they're doing it in LAPD. They're doing that still, but uh, you have intent also to go to each community, to each synagogue, to know that you're there, that uh, you're protecting uh, the community. We are going one by one to different synagogues, different. Uh, different places of worship we have been doing that i've been doing that myself personally and uh, we're going to continue to do that till we cover all of our houses of worship it's going to take a while because there's a lot but um we're um our defunding has definitely been hampering our efforts on doing outreach so we'll, we'll definitely get there out there and uh, we'll make it a point to make sure all of our our synagogues and our temples are also covered as well particularly from the West Hollywood Station area. Sure, I know want... you're under some time pressure. Uh, if you want to take more questions, it's up to you. But if not, we understand and respect it. So, I know I'm, I'm good for a little bit. I think I'm doing in a, in a, I got a few more minutes. If I could take any other question, I'd love to hear it. And, uh, yeah, I would love to ask you a question uh, to go more into your intel. Um, how deep is the intel? Is it just on the surface stuff that is on Facebook, Twitter, uh, and out there? Or do you go deep into the dark web and places that where those hate chatter go, go by freely? Well, I'll tell you this. We have, uh, we do all the social media. We're constantly monitoring all social media and all the known hate sites and the players. We have a very good profile on who's active. And a lot of individuals will have like 10 different accounts or 20 accounts. It's just one person. So we're, we're aware of that. We have people that are, uh, that are friendly to us that are working and they have a presence on some of these places. So that's been very beneficial to us. So we've been able to learn things in advance. And uh, we also have our fraud and cyber crimes unit. They're uh, experts in when it comes to the dark web from a lot of frauds, a lot of things that are going on in the in the the black the black market of the gray economy the one that's really not on the books so that we have a very good presence there we work very closely with the fbi and between the two of us we're constantly joining uh partnerships and task forces on issues as they arise so that that is a very healthy uh, relationship right there at the state level we're not getting the same degree of cooperation but between us and the feds yes we're working very strongly together uh, I'd like one more thing. When Commissioner Howard was a Homeland Security as the state of New York, and he was originally also from Office of Emergency Management under Giuliani, he had, he had a, uh, a program that what he had intel 
when concerning certain individuals, it's, uh, if it's Jewish or Muslim, whatever, he would inform the leaders of those communities that something is about to happen or they have some intel to, 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 to alert us that we should be more cognizant of what's going on. Do you have that in LA? Yes, we do. We do have that. Our major crimes bureau, we have a hate crimes task force and any issue is becomes actionable information and we can alert to for give you a chance to obviously harden the target and avoid yourself from becoming a victim. We'll provide that information to, uh, to the leaders of those communities or if it's an individual that's actually specifically identified. We have something called a terrorist soft notification where we have to inform someone who is subject to a, uh, a criminal threat. Thank you. I hope to see you in LA soon. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. So you have an election coming up. When is that election? Uh, June 7th. Ah, close. Yeah. It's like a marathon. So we're, we're in the middle of it. Sheriff, I'll jump in for, for one second with a, with a question. First off, thank you again so much for making the time today, but you know, we wanted to, uh, to quickly touch on the fact that anti-Semitic crimes are, are hate crimes, plain and simple. And we want to make sure that it translates uh, that way in court as well. Uh, can you speak on the collaboration between your department and district and state attorneys to ensure that actors perpetrating violence against the Jewish community uh, do indeed face the full extent of the law? Well, our concern right I have right now is with the district attorney, George Gascon. Because remember, in California, hate crime is not a crime of itself. It's an enhancement for another crime. So if you ha don't have an underlying crime attached to it, then they don't classify it as a hate crime. Sorry. So if someone yells anti-Semitic slurs but doesn't strike someone, it's no longer a hate crime in the eyes of the district attorney and California law. So when they're misdemeanor crimes, and this is where he got into some hot water early on, as you're probably familiar with these cases where he didn't want to prosecute them as hate crimes, but it took a lot of outreach and uh, outpouring of anger from the community where he kind of changed his mind, but that was only on very specific cases. It should be a blanket policy, a zero tolerance. If there is any hate crime attached to a crime, that crime has to be prosecuted as a hate crime. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So that's what I, my concern is with the DA, that I don't see that aggressive zero tolerance posture from the DA's office. So he's trying to be very nuanced and cute, kind of be on the fence, because he's trying to satisfy two masters at the same time. And I say, there's right and wrong. Let's figure it out. Absolutely. We want to make sure it translates that way in court. Thank you, Sheriff. You got it. Thank you. Sheriff, thank you so much for your time. By the way, um, if we could support you in trying to make sure they're not going to reduce funding on the intelligence side, uh, we'd yes. be happy to write some letters or call the governor's office. Uh, you know, we, we do know the governor. Uh, not that he listens to what we say all the time, but be happy to support you. So just tell us how to do that. If you want, I'll, I'll try to get a hold of you uh, after this meeting sometime. And yes, I'm going to. We're in the middle of a back and forth with the state about funding for our, our capacity on intelligence sharing and on the LA Clear, for example. And uh, I know there's supposed to be a new system. However, they're starving out the old system and we don't have like a fallback position on it, which is, is very uh, concerning for us. So let me find a little bit more on that. And uh, I have a lieutenant who's actually oversees a project. We're going to have a information to present for the governor, but uh, we want to give you guys a bite at that apple as well. So yeah, because we've us. been going after law enforcement when we think that uh, they're uh, dropping a ball on some of this. Well, so, we don't. We so don't we, drop balls at all. Our our my position is I have zero tolerance for hate crimes and incidents. I want them all documented. I want them investigated. If I can put handcuffs on a bad guy, I want that to happen. And I want to, to have a justice serve. And it's not going to happen by looking the other way or trying to downplay incidents. Let's take them as a serious threat that they are. Well, if you don't mind, I'll have the office contact your office. You tell us who we yes. can talk to. You, and uh, we can write some letters and support you. Um, OK, the guy's name is Lieutenant Blaine Talmo. Blaine? Blaine, B-L-A-I-N-E. Blaine Talmo. H-A-L? T-A-L-M-O is his last name. 
Talmo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll reach out and figure out how to get a hold of him. And well, uh, yeah, yeah, you can go through my office and we'll we'll make the connection for you. All right, that'd be great. So thank you so much, Sheriff. It's been interesting. We, uh, as a community, you can imagine, we've got a lot of folks out there concerned and uh, with people like you and, you know, holding on to the reins, I think we can be more comfortable. So thank you for all that you do. Well, you got it. We got your back. We'll always be there for you. All right. Thank you. Good to hear. Thank you, Sheriff. Right. Take care, everybody. All right. Thank you all. Bye-bye.